What's up ladies and gents and welcome back to Killing Floor 2. We are once again here with another weekly mission. This time Bubble said. Now obviously in the text you can read something went horribly wrong, blah 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 blah. Their heads are way larger than normal. Okay. Now once again, it's locked to suicidal difficulty and medium 7 wavelength. As per usual, you choose it by going to the game mode and choosing weekly. And the map. I picked the new one. You can pick whatever you wish. It works just fine. Now, what is special about this mode? Well, in theory only, I mean, you can see it here. Their heads are bigger. In practice, however, there's one thing you need to consider and that is well, they're not only bigger, they also take a lot more damage. And, I mean, rightfully so, because if they were simply bigger that would be a bit too easy, right? Now, is it really getting harder by their heads just taking more damage and being bigger as an offset, does that make it harder? Because until now everything what with that the weekly challenges did kind of made the game harder, right? I mean the first one that made the Zeds explode, if you were close you were pretty much dead. Or at least pretty severely damaged. Now with the second one where you had to go for headshots only. Their health was a little lower, especially the boss health. I don't know if the Z health was lower, but the boss health was lower to offset this. At the same time, I still think having to go for headshots exclusively made it harder. Now, the third one made the Zs go smaller and obviously smaller targets are harder to hit resulting in a harder game. Oh, come on. Some people have Final choices and here we have the fourth one now. They do get larger heads which makes headshots a lot easier but at the same time the heads take a lot more damage so does that make it harder? Actually I don't think so. I don't think it's any harder. Truth be told, I think this is probably by far the easiest one that they put out so far. Now, a few perks struggle with ammo early on. At least if you're not careful you can struggle with ammo. Um, I'm thinking of SWAT in particular. Because SWAT actually takes quite a few shots to kill something in this mode. Especially medium to higher tier Zs, they take a ton of shots. Walk through there. But let me tell you, getting headshots is incredibly easy. You need to just spam in the general direction and you are getting headshots, like, no doubt about it. You could go the alternative route of, say, Firebug and not worry about headshots at all, but I mean, you're basically gifted free headshots, so not actually going for headshots seems a little weird, maybe, I don't know. As you can see, it doesn't take like a bazillion headshots, it takes a few more on, on some sets. I mean, the, the 9mm isn't as deadly against tr trash, but you can get by. It's it's not like you can't win this, or you can't kill anything. That's not the case. So naturally, the perk to pick here is Gunslinger. Why? Well, you do have rack em up, right? Here, that, that skill, rack em up. You can keep that multiplier, that damage multiplier, up for so long. I mean, 
you basically have a bonus damage going at all times because you're going to get headshots at all times. I mean, you don't need to worry about headshots. You're just going to get them. Straight up. No questions asked. So it really, wow, it really isn't a problem. I mean, this is going to cost some ammo, yeah, but, you know. I mean, you can see we are up at a times five multiplier. This is ridiculous. And you are going to hold that multiplier because you are always going to have stuff to headshot. You can headshot everything in this mode. The heads are so enormous. It's probably a lot harder to miss the head than to get a headshot. So Gunslinger is kind of the obvious choice now. Sharpshooter works with Rack'em'Up. I mean everything works. Honestly this is by far the easiest challenge so far so everything works. I did Commando earlier to test it out. It works just fine. I did SWAT to confirm my theory that it's probably hampered the most by that change. But even SWAT worked fine. I mean, yeah, it takes a little little more shots. You probably need a little more ammo. But, you know, it, it works. It works just fine. I'm impressed by your survival instinct out there. And I must say, while this is probably the easiest one, it is a very fun one. I mean, I have to give them that. Because having like so easy headshots at hand, and I don't know why I bought armor, that was a mistake, but alright. Having so many easy headshots at hand can make the game quite fun if... You like you're gonna see it later, you're gonna have all these sets and you're just headshot, headshot, headshot and boom, 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 you know? So, that does make it somewhat fun to play. But, I mean, I said it before, it's... If you do it in solo, it's not really a challenge. I tried one multiplayer game and I must say the massive head health does cause trouble to some teams when it comes to scrakes and flesh pounds especially. But at the same time like most pub players at least manage to get headshots on those guys. So it's really not a problem if you have some sort of coordination at all. So I stand by that so far. Probably the easiest challenge. And you can finally kill those goddamn stalkers. Well, I say that and I start missing them, but you know, that happens I guess. Dead, dead, dead. And as you can see here now, you saw how he started raging and after I did a certain amount of damage to his head, he actually stopped raging again. Now that is a very interesting mechanic that I noticed with these Zeds is... I shot Flash Pounds out of their rage. Like I got enough damage in or enough headshots in, they just stopped raging. They stopped running at me, like that was very interesting. And it actually also worked on the pre-raged flesh pounds that spawn raged and then run at you. You can do that to them as well. That was very interesting to see. Never noticed there was a collectible right there. Interesting. Wow, talk about not cutting edge. So basically the challenge is well, there is not much. There really isn't much of a challenge here. The reward is pretty cool, I must say that. Um, the reward is... pretty, pretty cool. Now, what looks a little bit silly is the human models, because they also have larger heads. <laughs> and truth be told, it, it, it looks silly. But, I mean, let's be honest, silly is the name of the game, right? I mean, this entire theme is silly, but it works. It's 
arguably is still a lot of fun. Now, you will get some negative Nancys that say, Erperer, my serious killing floor game is not serious anymore. And, well, they're, they're right, but it's also a, a game, you know? So, you know, who cares? So many sirens. Whee! So many sirens. Now, as you can see, with a constant extra damage, this is quite easy to do. Other perks just require quite a lot of headshots to take care of, say, a Flesh Pound, or a Scrake, or comparable Zeds. Actually, there is no comparable Zeds to those. Not sure where I was going with that. But as you can see, that really didn't take too many shots. And I must admit, if you do this on multiplayer, and I will probably record some of that later, and you play Gunslinger, and you're taking a Scrake or a Flesh Pound, just laying in headshot after headshot and spamming headshots at their way is pretty satisfying. Especially thanks to the rack em up sound. I mean, you get that sound again and again and again and... Yeah, I must admit, it's pretty satisfying, I mean. The center fire has a little bit of a slower fire rate, so... It doesn't quite feel as good, but if you go double pistols like the Desert Eagles and you just spam headshots, that sounds pretty nice. Obviously you can do that before, I mean in the regular game, you can do that as well. You can spam headshots and... You can argue it's even more fun there because it's a lot harder and when you pull it off it's great, but I mean, come on. This, this one is about having fun and... It is fun to just rack up headshots, I mean. No matter how hard or easy it is in this challenge, but come on, look at... Headshot, 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 headshot. I mean, there is a certain satisfaction to this. Even though it's not particularly difficult. Alright, that was pretty, pretty bad. I admit that. Now, as the weekly events go, yes, I said this is the easiest so far, but that doesn't mean it's the worst, right? I mean, I still enjoy it. And that's why I play this game for enjoyment, and this has certainly been enjoyable, to say the least. Just playing it for the pling sound when you get the rack em up is kind of fun, like... Pling? <laughs> I'm sorry, that is, it is a little bit childish, but come on. There's a certain fun to it, no? Hear that? That's fun, right? Uh, it does get old relatively early, I mean, you Your won't be doing this forever, but for, for a few rounds, this is pretty satisfying. So, enjoy it while it lasts. I mean, this only lasts a week and comes back eight you weeks later, away. so for that duration, it is pretty fun. Like I said, in, in multiplayer this is actually somewhat of a balance changer because of how much damage the large sets take. And even with the smaller, the trash sets now require actual focusing down, so... It does change the balance of the game a little bit. And I honestly think it catapults Gunslinger from arguably top tier when played well to borderline number one. No questions asked. We 
Because let's be honest, Gunslinger has always been in the conversation for is it the best perk or not. And people said, well, if played properly, it is the best perk. Now, it's hard to not play it properly in this challenge, right? I probably should have sidestepped there. That was pretty stupid. Oh well. But like I just said, I mean, people always say, like, if played properly, Gunslinger is great. And I agree, if played properly, it is. But in this one, like... You almost can't fail. You, you have to play it properly. It's hard to not get headshots in, in, in this one, I mean... You don't even need to aim properly, you just aim like somewhere in their direction and then bam. Oh no. And here we show if I can. Yeah, see? I got a few headshots in a row, did some damage to his head and he just stopped raging for some reason. I've never seen that before this weekly event and I think it's exclusive to this event. Now, I can't confirm that, but I am pretty sure that this is an exclusive one for this event. If not, feel free to correct me, obviously. I mean, I am... I am not one to shut down any sort of correction. I'll gladly take it. And now we're at the boss fight already. Now I hope we get the Patriarch. He... He looks real fun with a large head, but... I wouldn't mind getting Hans neither. He looks rather interesting with a large head as well. Maybe we get some footage of both the bosses during the course of this week. Certainly hope that we will. And now we almost finished it. And this is actually very fast as well. We play like, what, 15 minutes now? It's gonna be like a 20 minute challenge. So that's that's pretty cool, I must admit. I'm about to shut the pod. Wow, talk about not cutting edge. Yeah, not cutting edge indeed. This is cutting edge. If you get the drift. Get back to work. So Was what boss do we bad? get? Yay, Patriarch. I still didn't actually get Hans, if I think about it. Did I watch Hans in a video with a large head, or where where do I remember that from? I don't know. I wanted to say something to him, but I didn't know what. Let's just spam headshots at him, right? And gone he is. I mean, this is going to be easy. Poor Patriarch doesn't really stand a chance with a head that large. I mean, you're just constantly going to do massive damage with a... with a multiplier that you have going at literally all times. It's so hard to completely lose a multiplier on this one. Man, I don't like you, go away. Spamming headshots against the boss is even more satisfying than spamming them against six like, Grakes or something. Especially when you think back to like how often you try to kill that guy and he pulls some cheap shit at you and now you can get some revenge. That is some fun, I must admit. Alright. Come back, come back, come back. Please. Obviously, if you want to practice getting headshots, like if, if you're not very good at that, then this challenge can give you, like, a, a little bit of a direction. Ouch. 
Hey, we killed a gore fast. I didn't even notice that. Oh, 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 yep. God, set time is even better. <laughs> And there we go. Now if you have a commando on your team and you get set time as gunslinger, that's even better, I mean. <laughs> you can just spam headshots like there's no tomorrow. Oh, my mouse was stuck for a second. Mouse pad too small. Actually it's huge, but I'm only using the left half because the right half is cluttered up with swords of, I don't know, What's on the right half? My phone? Actually only my phone. It's placed like right in the middle of it. Ah, uh, ammo. Grabbing some ammo. Woo! No machine gun for you, sir. Not today. I have some grenades. Where do? Where am I going? <laughs> nope. You keep your pipe where it belongs. I don't like it. Hey, look at this! I didn't even see him. I said keep your pipe where it belongs. Jeez, I don't want it. Stop that. Stop it. I'm not into your shit. And we did it. Now as you can see the pistol spam, the pistol headshot spam is pretty fun and here you can see the character. I mean, look at it! Looks ridiculous. <laughs> this entire challenge is ridiculous. Not very difficult though, so I hope you can do this yourself. Rack up some headshots, probably even grab a new headshot record. No, this obviously wasn't very many headshots. Mm, if you go SWAT you can actually land tons of headshots, but... Oh well. So I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see each other in the next video. Until then, farewell.